how to market from your heart. How do you build your business and do your marketing in a way that not only increases revenue and increases clients consistently, but does it in a way where it leads to fulfillment. So I know so many spiritual entrepreneurs are just in a place of trying to manifest and trying to attract their ideal business goals and struggle doing so. But it's in this episode where we're going to learn how to do all of that from your heart and from a frequency of love. And that's why we've got Marietta here. Marietta Oslenik is here, who's able to walk you through how she was able to do that, how she's able to grow and meet her business goals from a place of love frequency and from a place that is aligned truly to her. So Marietta came to the US in 2007 and she only had about $700 to her name. And very, very quickly, she was able to build a successful law firm with her partner. But a lot of that fell apart when they broke up. She felt lost, scared, uh, fearful, as you'll hear in the interview. Uh, but that's really what kickstarted her spiritual journey. She was able to travel all around the world and do these Vipassana retreats, 21 days in silence, just to find out who and what she really is, who she is without all of the patterns around money and all fears and all, all the things that we get hung up by. But that's really what we're here to learn. After that, she was able to apply so many different things, so many different love frequencies into her marketing, into her business. She was able to five times her income in 60 days and reach her business goal of $100,000 months. So in this episode, this is what you're gonna learn. One, exactly how she was able to do that, increase her level of income and do it from her heart. Two, how to inject love frequencies into your marketing, into your business, so that you can grow and so that you can make the impact you're here to create. Three, really how to impact your own self, how to generate self-love, how to generate the self-worth so that you can charge what you really wanna charge. And four, how to do your marketing from a place of heart so that your audience can feel your authentic self. Let's dive in. Okay, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Awaken Your Business podcast. I've Marietta here, and as you heard in the uh, in the intro, we're we're all about introducing spirituality, frequency, love, energy, all in the world of business and all in the world of business strategy. And Marietta has been one that's been able to manifest a crazy amount of success and an abundance within her own journey. And this is what I want to bring a lot of. I want to bring some strategy to help you guys. If you're, if you're confused, if you're lost, if you're not too sure what to do, if you're not too sure, do I, need to, do I need to shift my frequency? Do I need to shift my internal state, my internal motivation and my mindset? Or is it a, a strategy I want to implement that's going to get me to the next level to experience level of abundance that I want to feel? Um, that's what we're here to do. And you're going to catch some, uh, some things you can implement in your own life, in your own business. And that's what we're here for. We're going to really diving deep into Marietta's story and, and her life. And if you can have some takeaways for yourself that you want to implement, then all's good for you. But Marietta, first of all, welcome. How are you doing? Yay. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. It's a pleasure. As soon as I, I saw you on, on YouTube and I started checking out a lot of your, uh, a lot of your content, I was like, man, I need to reach out and introduce <laughs> myself and see, see how I can serve and how I can help because you're doing exactly what I think is aligned with the world in, in the form of going in deep and, and going on your own spiritual journey and then mm -hmm. finding ways to add more value yeah. to, uh, to those you feel called to. So feel free to share with the audience. What is it? How is it that you describe what you do and uh, mm -hmm. share a bit about how you, how you went through this journey and a bit about your story in terms of how you came to this place? Of course. So what I do, I like to call it 5D entrepreneurship. I call myself 5D business coach. And so it is sort of a fusion of uh, bringing frequency energy with strategy, business strategy. And the way I sort of came up with the concept was really, it was just one day I got this download that I should be teaching 5D entrepreneurship. And I was like, what is that? Um, so it's really a combination of my experience over the years uh, as an attorney and uh, also entrepreneur with my own spiritual awakening. So, so that pretty much started, I'd say, eight years ago. And um, during my spiritual awakening, I 
downloaded content of my book, Love is the Law, and uh, it has 21 different universal laws. And one of them is the law of circulation and how to create abundance, but not just the abundance in sense of financial freedom, but also abundance in general, the, the, the 5D living, if you will. So, so that kind of came to me after going through very painful breakup and uh, my world sort of collapsed and uh, I sort of felt that uh, I lost everything because my back then partner was also my business partner. So everything collapsed at the same time for me. So I found myself in a very dark place and not knowing how to navigate, you know, and not knowing what's my life purpose, how am I going to put this mess together, you know, and that sort of triggered the spiritual journey. Mm. Well, what was the, what was that like? Cause I know a lot of people in their life, especially in the world of, of COVID, especially in the world of following their heart, they can reach these, these periods where they feel like everything's falling apart. They feel mm-hmm. like whether it's their health, their relationships, their finances, their, their business, and they're just either, they feel stuck, they feel confused and they feel everything. Their whole life is just falling apart. What was that like for you? What were you feeling? What were you going through? And, and what advice would you give someone who's going through something similar? So it felt like uh, my relationship ended as a result of sort of betrayal. The person sort of, even though, you know what I mean, like in spiritual world, like we don't really use these terms, but it was not, it was not pleasant breakup. I, I would say, say it this way. And, and I felt pretty heartbroken. And at the same time, I was so scared to be on my own because as a woman, I was in this relationship that wasn't really healthy relationship. It was actually a toxic relationship. The person was sort of narcissistic, if you know what I mean. And I'm pretty much empath myself. So, and I didn't even know it. So I was very drained energetically. And when that relationship ended, at the same time, my business collapsed because we were business partners and I lost my business. Just so you understand the background, it was a law firm that we co-founded together. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm myself immigrant. So I moved to the United States with $700, went to law school, very expensive law school, graduated, became licensed attorney, couldn't find a job. So because nobody would hire me and give me the work visa in the US. So I started my own business and sponsored myself and my visa was connected with that law firm. So imagine the stress. Like I sort of was in between, should I, uh, what should I do? Because I don't want to lose everything I work for, for so many years. You know what I mean? To be, where, to be where I was back then was something that I earned. I mean, as an immigrant, it was just very difficult. And I was at that moment in time, I felt like everything is collapsing and I had no idea why. And I felt like the biggest failure ever. And of course, scared and heartbroken and not knowing what to do with my life. And yet it was the beginning of Dark Knight of the Soul, which was absolutely essential for me to evolve into person who I am today. So I am very grateful because if someone is going through challenges and I I can totally understand, you know, COVID caused so many different shifts within humanity and it is forcing people to wake up. And when I look back, actually, I'm so grateful. I'm, I'm very grateful to that person and that experience because that literally forced me to go within. Otherwise, I wouldn't go within. Otherwise, I wouldn't start my meditation practice. I wouldn't, you know, read all these different books and I wouldn't really go within, in other words, right? So it's literally triggered my own journey that was ne- necessary for me to evolve. And I believe the pain is the greatest teacher And I feel like those people who are going through transformation, humanity is going through transformation. We need to see it as something positive, even though it is blessing in disguise. And some people might disagree with this, but I feel like we are learning the ultimate lessons as humanity. So we can actually go to the next level of consciousness, literally. Wow. So what is it you experienced when you went through um, the breakup and you had this ties in with your, your visa and you're f- feeling everything falling apart. 
how did that necessarily um, start your spiritual awakening? Did you, is it because of that you started meditating? You started reading? Yeah, books, yeah. Started getting on yeah, exactly. What, what exactly. Was, what was that like? Yeah, I started my meditation practice because I felt I was in so much pain that I didn't know what to do with myself. And I moved to San Diego. A friend of mine offered me an apartment there. Uh, he, was, uh, he was moving out of San Diego. So he gave, he gave me a temporary place. And I literally just took a leap of faith and, and, and I moved to San Diego. I didn't know anybody. And I started to daily meditation practice and just, you know, spending time with myself. And that was one of my greatest fears back then to be on my own, you know, to spend time with myself. And so I challenged myself to be able to do that and manage that. And then of course I started my other company, which I had no idea. <laughs> well, like, yeah, so yeah, long story short. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that, that started my meditation practice and it deepened all those questions within me. Why am I here? What's my purpose and how to love myself really? Because I had no idea. And uh, I realized on the way that the foundation of your success, your wealth, abundance, relationships, whether it's romantic relationship, friendships, you know, any, any, any relationship essentially is a reflection of who you are and how you really love yourself and value yourself. So, so it took me a while to understand that who I am, you know, and, um, and, and to culti cultivate that relationship with myself, which is ongoing practice, daily practice. Totally. I think we all recognize that. We all recognize it's a, it's a never ending unfolding, you know, yeah. feelings of the onion, just going deeper and deeper. Totally. Um, what did, Absolutely. what did you experience when you, when you started loving your finding ways to love yourself and have that love frequency? Um, how did you reach, how did you reach that? that state what did you what did you do in particular that allowed you to love yourself more was it was it the meditation was it diving deep and journaling was it doing different things in terms of realizing your own value what what happened there what was that transition like everything you mentioned plus i i went on different retreats and one of the most profound retreat i went on was silence retreat uh, i decided to travel the world for i think it was a year and a half so I did my first silent retreat in, in Bali. Uh, so we would just sit in silence for 10 days and we would meditate, I think between 12 to 16 hours a day. Um, and that actually, that experience showed me, or actually I experienced what it means to, to feel love for no reason. You know what I mean? Like the energy of love. Of like the frequency of love, the, the life force yeah. I felt within me. I was able to heal myself. For example, I had chronic back pain back then that I was able to heal completely within those 10 days. Um, and I felt actually depressed before I went to that retreat because none of those traditional things like just meditating by yourself for an hour or going to these different spiritual workshops or conferences or, you know, the typical self-help stuff. You're reading books, watching movies, you know, taking courses, programs, coaches. None of that really worked for me, even though I was at that point in time, I think I, it was like three, three, three and a half years I was in doing all these different things, um, but it wasn't really effective. So I decided that I need something more drastic. So I went into silence and that actually was probably the most profound experience, spiritual experience for me. I, uh, I didn't do any ayahuasca or none of that, you know, because I believe that um, we should do what we are called to do. And I, I was called to go to silence. So for me, the silence retreat literally showed me that, <clears throat> that I'm actually energy. I'm not human body. And I felt energy actually vibrating energy. And then I would have these different downloads, you know, what I should do with my life. And uh, one of them was that, yeah, I need to publish my book because the book came to me actually before I went to silence retreat, just, I would just hear the voice like telling me that, okay, we're going to write a book. Um, it's not that I hear voices. It was more like a higher self sort of energy that's telling me that I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's inspiration. Some people who paint, they can understand it comes to you. You just, you're just the vessel messenger. 
So that's kind of the, the way my book came to me. And, and after I was hiding, I didn't want to publish the book because I wanted to be normal lawyer, you know, <laughs> just within the box, normal. <laughs> and so I, I was kind of hiding for, I don't know, three years or so. And, um, and I did the first retreat, then I did second one in Nepal, then I did a third one in Hawaii. And the third retreat I did was 2019. And I literally heard the voice, like, you have to publish the book, it's time. And you have to start this five, the entrepreneurship coaching. It's like, okay. I kind of, I kind of learned to um, respect and honor the voice within me because if I don't honor my intuition or I go against that, somehow it backfires at some point. So I learned over the years that actually every time my intuition is telling me to do something or go somewhere, talk to a certain person, it's aligned, it's perfect. If I, if I, if I start analyzing with my legal analytical brain, it's just creating resistance and unhappiness. Wow, that's what I can see. Such a, a big transition is moving from law into 5D entrepreneurship where you're integrating a lot of these, you know, more esoteric topics into your life and being guided and, and accessing different levels of frequency. It would it it must have been a big shift, hey. It must have been a big uh transition to go from such an analytical mindset into such a deeper level of trust. Is that is that what you found? Yeah, it's true. But you know, the funny thing is that I still do have, now I have two different companies. <laughs> I still keep my law firm and I, I'm choosing clients, like only certain premium clients who are also aligned and they are resonating with me. And I work with people who are amazing people, amazing, amazing humans. But also I have this five-day entrepreneurship business now where I'm totally using the frequency mindset and, and the strategy is only like 20%. But I absolutely agree with you. But it was more of internal decision because I was actually judging myself for feeling that I am more than just a lawyer. And I, I really didn't want to be that. You know, I didn't want to disclose to everyone, you know, I'm actually this author of this book. I want to publish it now and I'm going to share my story that is very vulnerable in the book. And then I'm going to, you know, call myself this 5D business coach. Like I was resisting. It was the thing is, I believe that we are multi-passionate, talented beings and we can be everything, all of it. You know what I mean? We shouldn't put any labels. And that's why I'm very like mindful. How do I introduce myself even when people want to, you know, introduce me or call me certain names? Because when you say you're a lawyer, they put you in a box. When you say you are author, spiritual author, put you in another box. You, you say 5D coach, what is that? You know what I mean? So I don't even like these labels. It's kind of like... At the moment, this is what I do. And as long as I follow my heart and I'm true to my heart, I know I can uplift humanity because the gateway is your heart and it starts within. Like you have to allow yourself to be who you are, even though you're judging yourself because that's just that, that ego, the ego yeah. part that is doing it. Totally. So you, you went from heartbroken and going through this dark night of the soul to increasing your income by five times in, yeah. in 60 days. Mm -hmm. What was that? What was that transition? What, what do you think made the difference to go from A to B? What was that sort of, what was that shift like for you? What, what sort of advice would you give someone who's also going through their, uh, their dark night and what's a similar result to you? Absolutely. So here's, here's how, the way I see it. You know, there are many coaches who are giving you certain blueprint and they give you formula and they say, you know, if you do this and that, you're going to 5X or 10X your income, whatever. Um, in my case, like I, I, I took different programs and I had different coaches, I implemented all the strategies and it wasn't working for me. And then I sort of gave up on those strategies and I decided to just, again, follow my intuition, follow my heart, but most importantly, tune into the frequency. Now, the, the way we tune into the frequency, because this was something I was kind of trying to figure it out, like, how can I tune into the frequency? You know what I mean? Like, how do I tune into the frequency? How, 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 how? So I can just tell you, 
I'm, I'm going to try to explain like what I, what I did was I reached the point in my business where I was just so tired of sort of repeating the same pattern. And I decided consciously that this is it. Like I'm not available for this experience anymore. It's almost like you are fed up with the relationship and you decide, you know what, I'm breaking up with you. It was sort of like that. Like you, you make internal decision that you're no longer available for this income and this experience, right? And as you make that decision, you are already stepping into different frequency. And then the question is, what kind of reality you want to create? And, 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 and you know, people usually have these different goals and they want to manifest this and that. And what works is when you actually, what you tune into the, that new frequency, you truly believe in your body and you know in your heart that it's doable, right? Because for example, if your goal is, I don't know, multiple seven figures and right now you're making 50K a year, it's very challenging to tune into that frequency and make that leap unless you can actually do the leap. But it starts with the frequency and, and you have to be completely aligned with that new number. And that's how you can actually shift to that energy. And, and, and the rest happened, of course, like I did have you know, certain strategies and, and funnels in place. But the difference was that I didn't do anything with my strategy, marketing strategy and funnels during that shift, when that shift happened, right? So, and it was within 60 days. So I knew, okay, it's the energy. And I can also give you another example. I went to that, one of those silence retreats, right? And I'm in complete silence. And I think this was my second retreat. And I'm in complete silence and I'm not really doing anything. I'm not doing really anything with marketing. I'm doing anything with strategy because I'm in silence. I don't even have my phone with me, right? And I'm out of silence, turn the phone on and money in the bank. You know what I mean? How do you explain that? So, so, so yeah, so it is the frequency. Yeah. And so that's how it happened. And of course, like, you know, I have certain certain formula, if you want to call it, that I'm using with my clients that I'm, when I'm coaching them. And, um, and, and that, that's how I'm trying to explain it. But again, it is not, it's not like the kind of blueprint you, you just take and implement and next day, boom, you know, because I believe that, yeah, I can give you everything I know, all my downloads and everything, but essentially it's you who is on your own journey and everything you're going through every single step, even though when you're experiencing failure, quote unquote, it is preparing you for the next step and it's your journey to learn it. And so it's, I don't even have the right to actually shortcut your journey. I don't think it's correct. I'm just here to guide you and help you to, to make it happen. And because I feel like sometimes, you know, we need people to help us. Like I also had people who helped me on the way. Um, so yeah, I like it. And what, what did you have in place when you were saying you were implementing some strategies that, that weren't working, that weren't getting into the result? What did you, what strategies were you trying? What did you have in place? Um, before you started integrating? No, I, the, that sure. Sort of, you uh, know, I think I had like, um, I, I had definitely, I had like Facebook ads in place. I had YouTube channel back then already. I had um, webinars, I had different sales funnels, I had sales calls in place, and yet it was like, like I wasn't able to double my income, for example, right? So like the typical strategies you set in place when you are, you know, growing your company. Okay. And then what did you, what did you feel when you started, like you said, when you started actually resonating with the, the number that you wanted? and you were starting to believe it in your body, what did, that, what did that feel like in your body? What did you feel specifically so that people can understand? Sure, I felt excitement and I felt proud and I felt safety because everybody, I think everybody, when it comes to money, people wanna feel safe and, and like, that's like the basic. And then you wanna feel abundant, the overflow. The overflow is when you do have everything you need and more. So I started to feel these emotions. And that was able, and that's how I, and mostly I was excited. Like I was like, I felt like, uh, like, uh, 
like 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 something great already happened in my life even mm-hmm. though nothing really happened but I, I actually felt it coming to me does it make sense like I felt like like it's happening like oh my god you know what I mean like that kind of energy it's here it's around the corner like oh my god I can feel it like it's here great well, when did you notice when did you notice in the 3d world that it actually started to create a difference because you're feeling in your body you're feeling abundant you're feeling like it's happening when did you start to notice within that 60 days that things were actually starting to shift? Were there more clients coming in? Did you start getting more views on YouTube? Did you see? Yes, both. Yeah. And yeah, but you know, this was actually three, three and a half or almost four, four years ago, something like that. So I don't remember exactly like the time, you know, like what exactly was going on, but definitely I remember I, that back then one of my YouTube channels, the the legal one had only 2000 subscribers And within 60 days, it went from 2000 to, I think, five or 6,000. And it started like a snowball. Mm. That was kind of crazy because if you're a YouTuber, if you're building your YouTube, you know what I mean? Like the first two years are incredibly difficult if you want to build an organic following. And so so that was crazy. And uh, also, of course, like more sales calls, definitely but not even that, like I was able to sell, like I, I, I think I double or triple my price for my services and it, I sold it like that. Actually, I sold it to like a first client. I decided I'm like tripling the price. Boom. It was sold. It was crazy. Mm. What, what made you do that? What made you say, okay, I'm going to increase the price, double or, or triple the price. Self-worth, yeah. self-worth. And I realized my value, like, like I realized my journey, my value, what I'm able to do, do for my clients what I can offer, how different I am compared to my competition, even though there is no competition. It was all connected with my struggle, my story, things that I was able to overcome during those years, how far I was able to come by myself. And and that it's self-worth, self-worth and self-value and self-love. It's the, it's the foundation of your wealth. Truly it is not only your, you know, foundation of your beautiful romantic relationship, but um, also relationship with your clients and relationship with money, most importantly. Totally. That's key. And, and so you help people build these, these purpose-driven, you know, seven figure empires. What is it that, what is that process like? What is it that you specifically help them with? Um, are there any tips and tips or advice you'd have for someone who's, who's looking to, to implement that result for themselves? So, it's like I said, it is first the foundation is always the mindset. I mean, there is absolutely no doubt that you need to have the right mindset if you want to create any kind of abundance or wealth. Without the mindset and the alignment, for example, if it feels too much for you, you won't be able to attract it. Uh, so it, it is really the mindset. Uh, and then once we have the mindset and actually the mindset me, it means ongoing practice. It's ongoing every day, every day. And especially when you're leveling up, you know, you are going to have another different challenges. So it's ongoing work every single day. Um, so that's that. And then of course, different strategies, depending on a business, you know, I mostly work with service-based entrepreneurs, but some of my clients are not like online entrepreneurs like they are actual um you know they do have business physical type of business um the same principle applies and of course like you know then the relationship with teams and you know they have like obviously different structures and systems in place because you can't do it on your own everything right so you need to have system in place Mm, totally so what do you have in place what is it that you have to work on your own frequency, your own, your own um, mindset? What is it that you're focused on day to day that helps you sort of maintain and, and consistently evolve? That's a good question. So um, I am every single day, I am tuning in, like I am, I need to have me time, you know, and self-care is very important for me. So, so it is a really combination of uh, good night's sleep. It's very important for me and my brain, the way I function. If I don't have enough sleep, I mean, <laughs> my boyfriend hates that, you know, because <laughs> I'm not really pleasant then. Um, but um, yeah, 
definitely that and then meditation every single day uh and not just everything it's not like i have like certain time and i meditate in fact i i go with the flow i feel like the more you raise your frequency in your body the more flow state you you become and because it's not really about wanting it's about being right so so for me i don't i like to move like i have great ideas when i when I travel, for example, um, or when I'm doing something or when I work out or I go to pool, you know, or, or like, I'm in a movement, like the energy needs to be moving for me. So every day, of course, I take care of my body, like workout, that's a must and uh, clean food, definitely clean food. Um, I don't really eat meat. And the reason is that after one of those silence retreats, I just started to feel those emotions. I, I was so connected with nature and animals that it's sort of just changed me you know so um definitely clean diet is is a must and then the meditation uh that's interesting i meditate when i feel i need to meditate so sometimes i meditate daily twice a day three times a day sometimes i i don't meditate like there are days without meditation but it's almost like the, the purpose of meditation is to bring you to that state, right? So when you actually keep that state of mind, you don't really need to go and suddenly like, again, like put yourself in a box, like I'm going to meditate now. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's a combination of simple things, uh, return to nature. And I feel like nature is teaching us. And we, if, we, if we just tune in and follow intuition you know exactly what to do because everybody is different has different body you know um just just respect that your body is 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 divine temple and and uh, have respect for your body so I definitely feel the the advice here for anyone who's listening who wants a new level of income who wants a new level of um abundance and frequency yeah. is to truly live that way now truly have the instead of wanting like i said being being, being. That now and and feeling as if it's here welcoming it in and and allowing it and as you said before imagining it as if it's coming to you as if it's happening and yes that's when you seem to start to in higher level ideas that's when you start welcoming yes. in different levels of of, of yes. frequency for um for for abundance and welcoming in clients and all those different things um is that what you started to know like yourself? sorry to interrupt these are like basic things but then of course like i highly recommend that you actually visit places with high frequency you surround yourself with people who have high frequency coaches consultants you know people who've done it what you want to achieve so important they're going to raise your vibe Right. So that is something that, of course, like I have my own coaches. I invest into myself ongoing investment over the years. Every time I was able to make money, I actually invested money into another education or course or program or coach, right? Or retreat. Like this is important. Um, I myself go on retreats all the time. I surround myself with tribe of like minded, high frequency beings. So important. I let go of toxic people. I mean, Sorry to say it, but sometimes we have to clean the space, right? Like kind of like you need to clean your house if you want to welcome more abundance or change the house or even location, same goes with people. Um, you can expect to, um, to experience quantum leap and more abundance if, if you surround yourself with people who are lower frequency because we do influence each other. And most importantly, the moment you raise your vibration and you enter different level of frequency and abundance, you, you're not going to resonate with those people who are lower. So unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever you want to call it, I had to learn how to let go people over mm -hmm. the years, which was also painful because I love people and I, I uh, yeah, it wasn't easy, but uh, I knew I had to do it. So Sometimes this journey is lonely, but on the other hand, once you understand that you are never alone because you know you are you are connected constantly with your guides and 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 with the universe or God, whatever you want to call it, um, that's going to sort of give you that comfort feeling uh, that you can actually overcome anything that comes your way, and you'll be fine. 
Mm. Uh, so for me, those are also very important, I would say, contributions to my success and abundance. Um, because when you are surrounded by those people with higher level of abundance and frequency, it's like subconsciously you start, this is what we do humans, subconsciously we compare each other with each other, right? So when you see that, they are giving you permission to do the same. And it's all subconscious. If, if they can do it, of course I can do it. Imagine you are surrounded with people who are lower, you know, whatever, income, frequency, and then you compare yourself with them and you feel like, oh, I'm good. I'm probably the most successful one of these people. So I'm good. I don't need to go to the next level, right? Because the standard is different. So every time people, we, we interact with each other, it's a mirror effect, right? So you are around people who are higher frequency, more abundance, wealth. Of course, you start comparing. And it's almost like they start that snowball effect for you, vibrationally speaking. And you will be able to actually get there. So definitely invest in yourself. Love yourself enough to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good, a good statement because a lot of people are trying to are trying to build something, trying to build their business, trying to get out there and add value to, to the world and uh, not necessarily viewing themselves in a way that is valuable. And it can, it can, it can be that kind of resistance that stops people not only manifesting what they want, but giving it the, at the level that they want as well and contributing at levels they know they can because they in, intrinsically in themselves don't feel like they can add that much value, like they're not worth that investment they're not worth that amount of abundance and obviously yeah. that's going to create a lot of friction um yeah and it's you know what it goes both ways like for example i i totally remember those moments and actually i i'm experiencing the same sort of resistance when i'm going to the next level right like next level of wealth next level of investment next you know every time we go to the next level whether you add a zero or whatever you add to that number you're still going to experience the same issue. And it is, am I worthy to receive this level of abundance? Mm. Am I worthy to actually invest into this service or product, whatever I need to help me on my journey? The answer is, yes, you are. You are absolutely worthy. And not only that, I feel like when you give permission to actually receive that's kind of when, when you can actually double your prices very easily. And that's when you realize your value. And then it goes like, hand, it's, it's connected. Like when you actually invest more, the way I do it usually is I invest even before I'm ready to invest. I know this is maybe not for some people, but this, this is what I was doing all my life. I remember I moved to LA and I got expensive apartment, even though back then I couldn't afford it. But then I was like, you know what? I'm getting it because it feels right. And I'm going to figure out the way how I can actually afford it. And I did, you know what I mean? That's how I'm doing it for me. So every time I'm up leveling, I start and I take the action. It's already here. And then I adjust and I figure it out. Like, it's almost like I'm putting myself under pressure. Um, otherwise I wouldn't do it because there is no way you can create something when you're waiting for something it, it starts within you you have to become it first you have to become that wealthy individual to attract more wealth it's not the other way around and if you cannot afford for example sleep in i don't know five star hotel one night one thousand dollars per night at least go there for lunch you know what i mean like like do the little things that you can actually afford but it's going to bring you closer to the frequency and then um and then stretch yourself. Like if you stretch yourself, I'm not saying you should max out your credit card <laughs> disclaimer here. However, when you actually stretch yourself a bit, um, it, it will always give you the value. If you believe you can gain the value, you know what I mean? And again, it comes down to that limiting belief. Like what kind of belief you have around that? Like, do you believe that the more you invest, you can more money you can make? Or do you believe the more you invest, you, you, you go deeper in that? Like what, what is your belief around that, right? You can shift it, shift it and create the new set of beliefs. Mm. So um, it's really just the frequency, the patterns that we play with. And um, I believe there are unlimited possibilities if mm -hmm. we believe they are. Yeah. Right. I, I, I totally believe that in the form of we need to 
obviously become it now. And many people listening will know that the be, do, have model. We have to become, you know, become that version of ourselves first so that we can do what we want. Then we can eventually have it right. We need to, we need to be, we need to be at first and then do, and then have, and what you're explaining is that if you shift your frequency and you do the things that the version of you who's already achieved it would do, that's when you're, you're getting closer and closer to the frequency of, of, of having it. Right. Mm -hmm. But many people are opposite. Many people are trying to have the things so they can do what they want. So they can eventually become who they want to become. And it's, it's really, it's really backwards. Right. And it comes down to that fate, you know, when you actually first, let's suppose you want to, you want to be making certain income and you need help. You need someone to help you and show you the way you need to invest. For example, you want to invest. It resonates with your heart, but you don't do it because you don't believe you can actually generate it. It's your limiting belief. Now it comes down to simple. It comes down to that belief. Like, do you have a belief in you that you can pull this off? It's connected with faith. It's, it's absolutely connected. Like, do you truly believe that you can create anything you want? Are you creator or you're not? Are you creator or you are the victim? Which of these two? You can't sit on two chairs, you know? Mm-hmm. Again, love versus fear. Which of these frequencies you want to you wanna operate at? So it comes down to the decision. And then once you decide, you commit and trust that you will actually figure it out. So um, I do believe it's connected with self-love, with, 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 um, with universe, with God, higher power, like how, like how aligned you are with that energy. Because the more aligned you are, the less difficult life becomes. Mm. Easier manifestation. You are entering 5D because you're becoming that frequent. You know what I mean? you don't struggle. You can manifest instantly or almost instantly. Yeah. Let's say you manifest within 48 hours, something you would normally manifest in two years or you manifest in two weeks what normally takes five years. You know what I mean? Like these are all possible things in 5D. I, I, I'm, I actually am experiencing it and some of my clients are experiencing it. So I do believe it's possible. You know what I mean? But before that, I, I've been through a lot of struggle. So I feel like we struggle, we go through pain until you, we realize it's, it's enough. Like you have to decide like when it's enough. You know what I mean? Mm, beautiful. And you mentioned that with this frequency, with this energy, with this vibration, that's a big piece. And so in finishing off here, I want to also focus on the, the what you said, the 20% is towards some of the system, some of the strategy, some of the business tactics and tools, what is it that you have in place and what is it, how is it that you find your clients are able to, uh, are able to find you, are able to reach out to you? What, what are the, some of the systems and some of the business strategies you have in place? So I'm using mainly uh, YouTube channels that I have, and then I'm using Instagram, which is sort of my main strategy if you if you know what i mean but of course email marketing and webinars sometimes live streams um this is this combination of things that i'm doing collaboration with other people like-minded people we support each other um endorse each other um and that's pretty much it's online marketing social media pretty Mm, much totally awesome and is there some things that you've picked up along the way that you think people are running into challenges when it comes to they're implementing their business strategy. A lot of people do have YouTube channels, Instagram channels. There are forming collaborations, um, but they don't necessarily seem to be getting the the results that they want. Yeah. Um, Once they're working on their frequency, once they're welcoming in that vibration, is there anything in particular that you'd suggest in the form of strategy that, that they could implement or they could start to work on? You know, I'm really not that big on strategy. The more I'm big on the mindset, because I do believe the mindset and, and, and frequency is actually more than 80%. It's actually 90%. Um, because if you have all those perfect strategies in place, you can do a webinar every single day. You can do live stream every single day. I've done it. You know, I've been there. I've done webinar every, every, every single day. I've done like so many live streams that I was like obsessed. I I did have a period when I did every single video content every single day. I have, I think, over 800 videos on YouTube combined, both channels. So I've done it, you know what I mean? But if you don't have the, the, the frequency and the good offer at the same time, like you're not really delivering good value, good value and the frequency, 
and you don't actually believe that you can make a difference, you're not going to sell it, you're not going to deliver, you're not going to close, none of that. So it starts with you. And that's why it's so important to go within and do the work and love yourself. Mm. It's, it's, it's the key to 5D living and it's the key to 5D consciousness where the humanity is going. It's absolutely the key. Totally. So what you're saying is, is when you have that frequency within you, you have that self-worth, you have that self-value, then it doesn't matter what strategy you're using in the form of social media, you, you'll be adding value to the market and you you'll are. be creating offers you are. that are from your heart, right? From your heart. And it's a different frequency than from a calculative strategy that mm -hmm. some marketing guru is teaching you because you're coming from your heart. You're coming from um, divine place that is guiding you to create this type of business. And, and by the way, we are shifting to 5D model in, in a way that a lot of these 3D marketing strategies are no longer working because people can sense that, right? And they, don't, they just don't like the vibe. They, they are awakening. Humanity is awakening. So they're not going to... People are smart. They already know. They see through. You know what I mean? So if you're not coming from your heart, purity of your heart and service, you're not going to succeed in your business because the 5D is connected with the law of love. And if you're not operating from that place, your business will collapse. Mm. Like, you, like, sorry to say that, but I truly believe in that. And um, it's time for, for people and businesses to really change their purpose if they are not aligned with their purpose and mission because it's the, the, the time now is forcing us to do it, whether we like it or not. Perfect. Awesome. And, and such a good reminder that no, no matter what strategy you put out there, no matter how you market it, if people don't feel your heart, they're, they're not going to feel that energy behind it. And that's yes. what we're all attracted to. I, I trust me, I I've get so much feedback from people in the serving circle and, you know, those of my clients and I give my clients a, um, a form to fill out. And one of the questions is what gave you the confidence to, to sign up into this program 90% of them say it's the energy. 90% say, hey, we can actually tell you care. We can actually yes. tell that you have a heart and that you're, you're, you're actually genuinely kind towards yeah. your clients. And so that's what they feel. And, yeah. um, and that's what your audience, your clients will feel as well when you put that out there in the form of your marketing. Um, so this Very is beautiful and, and so many good reminders. Um, before we finish up, how can, how can people find out more about you? How can they... Uh, reach out to you? How can they get a hold of your book? Um, all those good things. Sure. So they can go to my website, marietaoslanek.com. And also my book, they can find at loveisthelaw.com. And of course I'm on YouTube. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. They can reach out and we can go from there. <laughs> okay, great. Awesome. Yeah. I'll put all the links in the, in the show notes uh, so people can easily do that. Uh, is there anything else that you have on your, on your heart? Anything else that you want to that you feel called to share this, to make this all wrap up and feel complete for you? Sure. I would like to say that love is the law. Literally. It's not just title of my book. <laughs> and uh, whenever you, whatever you do in life or in your business, always tune into your heart and trust your heart and uh, you'll be fine. And you're going to experience beautiful life. Beautiful. Marietta, thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate Thank your time. You. There's plenty of notes here that everyone can take away. Everyone who's listening, uh, definitely apply this. Apply this in your life. Notice the changes. Notice the frequency and energy shift. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks so much, Thank guys. Thank you so take much, care. guys. Thank you.